I've been wanting to demonstrate this feature for a while now, but I haven't quite found time to get around to it. So I um, decided this week to, to give it a go. Uh, the feature I'm going to demonstrate today is uh, DNS policies, which will be available with the next release of the Windows Server platform. To demonstrate this feature, I've got this little environment set up where I've got a headquarters site and a branch site. And I have two PCs um, on, on two different subnets. You can see headquarters there. We've got subnet 10 and a branch one we've got subnet 50. And I've got a DNS server headquarters, a single DNS server that has a DNS zone called FB test. He has other zones as well on there, but this is the zone we're working with today, FB test. Now, um, DNS policies um, is a way of controlling uh, DNS query, uh, DNS recursion, and DNS transfer traffic by um, creating policies and associating them with the uh, appropriate DNS zone. So I've already set this up. So what I'm going to do is test it first and show you the results, um, and then show you how I've configured these policies. And then we'll finish off with some um, suggestions on how DNS policies can be used in the future. So we're going to leave this screen now, and I'm going to flip over to uh, PowerShell. So here I am on PowerShell, and I'm on a uh, machine on the 10 network. So if I uh, ping, I'm going to ping an address. I'm going to ping www.fbtest.com. I hit return. And we get a response. So we get the name resolved to the 10001 address. If I do IP config forward slash display DNS, we'll be able to see the um, cache, the host name cache this machine. I'll resolve the cache this machine, sorry. And you can see there that FB test is in the cache resolved to IP address 10001. So that's, that's worked. Now what I'm going to do is flip to a machine in the 50 network and try the same ping. So here I am on the 50 network, uh, my branch office, and I'm going to ping the same name. So www.fbtest.com and we get resolved. But this time it resolves to a different IP. So from the branch, from the headquarters office, it resolved to 10 0 0 uh, one from here the the branch is resolved to 5001 and again if I do IP config forward slash display DNS you see in our resolver cache we've got a single record it resolved to the 5001 IP address now you might be thinking that this is uh, easily achievable today uh, and to an extent it is you know, if you've used um, multiple DNS servers, so you've got um, two DNS servers with the same zone and just different resource records, or rather the same resource record pointing at different IP addresses. So in one DNS server, the resource record points at 50.001. The other server, it points at 10.001. Then you can do that. And we call that split brain or split DNS. Split brain DNS or split DNS. But that, was what, that was, um, involves having two DNS servers and pointing your clients at the appropriate DNS server. You also might think of round robin. Um, if we use DNS round robin with Netmask ordering, then um, as a client pings the DNS server, it'll get returned all the entries uh, for www, but the DNS server will prioritize the uh, record that's in their subnet. It'll prioritize in the case of the 50 client, it will prioritize the address of the web server in the 50 network. But as you can see from IP config for display DNS, we're not receiving multiple records here for our query. We're only receiving a, sig a single query that points us at the um, correct server. So this is not DNS round robin. It's also not multiple DNS servers either. We have a single DNS server with a single um, zone that's providing this different records to different clients. So depending on where the clients are, if on the 10 network, they ping the address and get the um, 10 001 as a result, as a uh, response. On the 50 network, they get 50 001.
So let's have a look at the DNS server uh, and see how that, that looks uh, on the DNS server itself. So this is the uh, DNS server that both clients are using. And here you can see the fbtest.com fb zone. And notice that there's no records in there. There's no record for www.fbtest.com, um, which is, yeah, weird, I know. Um, and it's weird until we have a look at the files. So if we take a look at um, the files in File Explorer, so here we've got uh, our DNS folder, and we can see the fbtest.com uh, um, zone file out there, but also notice the fbtest.com folder. So this is um, uh, new, we've got this folder fbtest.com, and inside there we've got two more zone files, one for HQ zone and one for branch one zone. Now if I open up HQ zone file, so we'll say to open this up and scroll down, there you can see the entry for www, the A record, and it points at 10001. If we open up so if we open up the branch one zone scope file and say edit there, we can see the branch one zone file points at www but with a different IP address. So we have these two extra zone files with, with the actual A records in there. And these zone files are essentially mapped to FB test. You can actually see, see it up there. It says database file for branch one zone scope dot DNS for the branch one zone scope zone scope in zone fbtest.com. So what we've done is we've created these uh, two scopes um, and we've enabled the DNS policies um, on this server so that when anyone pings for fbtest.com the servers are checked first to see where the connection is coming from and if they're coming from the correct subnet for HQ they get the HQ entries if they're coming from the subnet from branch one, they get the branch one entries. But how did we do this? Well, the answer is we did it all with PowerShell. So let's uh, leave the DNS server here and open up the integrated script environment and have a look at the PowerShell commands that we used to configure these policies. So here we are in um, ISE and you can see that we've got a few commands here. Actually, there's four uh, PowerShell commands, each command's been used uh, twice. So at the top, we get the add DNS server client subnet command. And for um, DNS policies to work, we need to um, identify uh, subnets. So we've given the first client subnet a name of HQ, and we've identified the 10 network on there. And we've given the second network, uh, sorry, the second client subnet, the name branch one, and identified the subnet on there. Now, I know I've spelt branch wrong, but I didn't notice that until we started this video, so we will have to go with it. Now, these subnets, with these subnets identified, um, we also then need to identify the zone scopes. Now, these zone scopes then are going to be linked to fbtest.com. So you can see the next command, add DNS server zone scope, the name of the zone, fb.com, and then the, the name of the scope I want to create. Then the second command, exactly the same, except with the same fb.com DNS zone and a second scope. So remember the folders, the fb.com folders, fbtest.com folder we saw earlier on, and we saw the additional two zone files. Well, this command is creating the additional two zone files and linking them to the fbtest.com uh, zone. The next two commands, add DNS server resource record. We run that command twice. This time we're creating an A record. And you see we create the A record by identifying the zone name fbtest.com. We identify the IP address, but importantly at the end, we include the zone scope. So this tells um, uh, DNS to create this A record in the HQ, HQ zone scope. Then the, we run the same command again but this time, different IP address pointing at our branch zone scope. So we've got the two A records created there. And then finally, 
we have the command to configure the policy itself. Now, there's different types of um, DNS server policies. The policies we're working with right, na right now are called query resolution policies. Um, we also could create um, recursion policies, which control um, or allow us to control which servers we respond recursively to, uh, which, which domains, which clients that we allow to send recursive queries. Um, we also have a uh, tr zone transfer policy as well. And the zone transfer policy allows us to control at a server level uh, who can request zone transfers. So this policy, though, is a query resolution policy. In fact, we're creating uh, two. The first query resolution policy, called HQ zone policy, uh, says to allow and then a client subnet. Now you see the equals there. Uh, we can use different operators with this, equals, not equals. There's a list of operators um, on TechNet that you can have a look at. But here we're saying to allow the client subnet that equals HQ, and we're mapping that to our, our name HQ at the top, to query HQ zone scope. And that's the zone scope parameter. Now, when we use the zone scope parameter, you'll see a number there. So we've got a, a sort of a call on, uh, um, a one at the end of the scope name. Now, when we have uh, multiple policies linked to the same zone, we can use that number to prioritize policies. So they're processed in order. And the first policy that matches your query or your connection, that's the policy that would be applied. That's the policy you use. So we, we link that to FB test. Then we run the add dash DNS server query resolution policy again. This time, create a second policy for branch one. This time, allowing the client subnet that equals branch one. We link it to the scope, and we specify the uh, the, the uh, DNS zone. So, with this in place, then um, the, the query resolution policies are active. We can run um, get commands as well. So we have you know get dash DNS server query resolution policy, and it'll show you the policies that are enabled and which DNS zones they're um, linked to, and importantly the order in which they're processed. Now we've used this um, query, res query resolution policy um, to configure essentially split brain DNS. So using a single server to give different responses depending on where the client's IP addresses are. But there are other uses for this um, as well, uh, such as application high availability, where DNS clients are redirected to the healthiest endpoint for a given application. Uh, traffic management, DNS clients are redirected to the closest data center to them. Uh, split brain DNS, and that's the one we've just demoed in this short video where records are split into different zone scopes and DNS clients receive a response based on their subnet. Uh, blacklisting, DNS clients from a given location uh, are ignored while other clients uh, are allowed and we respond to them. Uh, DDoS mitigation, so distributed denial of service mitigation. Uh, we can uh, throttle the responses to DNS queries. So we can force clients to connect over TTP connections, that sort of thing. Um, anything over certain amounts that are dropped. Uh, and forensics, so if we see suspicious activity, we can redirect uh, clients to a sinkhole instead of a computer they're trying to reach and you know, pass them into something where we can do their monitoring, do monitoring. So all of these um, list of six things on the left hand side there are ways of using these policies. And remember we do have three types of policy. We uh, configured in the demo a query res resolution policy, but we also have recursion policies and zone transfer policies as well. All this information can be found on uh, TechNet. Uh, I've got a link at the bottom of the slide there. And I'll be posting more videos on Technical Preview 2 over the next few days. The next video will be on Hyper-V and some of the new Hyper-V features in Technical Preview 2. Thank you.